I'm reading a book、uh, about James Madison. The author is、uh, Richard Brooks Heiser. This is an introduction. August twenty four, eighteen fourteen, began as a typical summer day in Washington, bright and cloudless, promising heat and humidity as the day wore on. For years, James Madison, the president, had fled high summer in Washington and the other low-lying cities for the healthy air of his、uh, inland home in the Virginia Piedmont. But this August, his、uh, presence was required in the capital. America had been at war with Britain for two years. Mr. Madison's war, he had asked Congress to declare it. Had been fought along the Canadian border, against Indians on the frontiers, on the high seas. Now the war was coming home. A week earlier, on August seventeenth, twenty British ships carrying four thousand five hundred troops had anchored in the Patuxent River in Maryland. Only thirty-five miles away from、uh, Washington to the southeast, the president had、uh, suggested patting the enemy from the start with、uh, light troops, but nothing was done. Instead, the British disembarked and made a leisurely stroll up to the Maryland countryside, perhaps bound for Baltimore, a booming port, the third largest city in America. Secretary of War John Armstrong thought so. They would certainly not come to Washington. He said, "What the devil will they do there?" No, no. Baltimore is the place, sir. But、uh, now the British had made a left turn. Just hours earlier, at midnight, the president had gotten a note from the field: "The enemy are in full march for Washington." Destroy the bridges, remove the records. When James Madison had been a congressman, a quarter century earlier, he had helped move the nation's capital from New York to an undeveloped site on the Potomac. The new capital was still hardly more than a small town, stretching from Rock Creek in the west to Capitol Hill in the east. A ragged ark, decorated by a few incongruous public buildings, as if built by Asians or aliens. In the midst of it stood the White House. Madison was the third president to have lived there. John Adams, whom Madison scorned, had、uh, spent the dismal last days of his、uh, administration in a shell. Inside a construction site, Thomas Jefferson, whom Madison loved above all men, had run it like a Virginia plantation house, hosting intimate dinners for congressmen and diplomats with good food, excellent wine, and his own sparkling conversation. Madison's White House was a grandeur yet, thanks to his wife Dolly, who brightened it. With our banquets and sorries, red velvet curtains and green gilt-edged china, a piano and a, a marco. Now, a little before eight o'clock in the morning on August twenty-four, a message came to this Republican palace from General William Winder, commander of the Potomac Military District. It was addressed to Armstrong. But the president opened it himself. The general wanted advice as fast as possible. Madison mounted his horse and left the white horse for Winder's headquarters at the navy yard. The navy yard was a mile south of town, on the eastern branch of the Potomac, now called the Anacostia River. There was a bridge there, about where the Eleventh Street Bridge is now. All morning, 
Madison conferred with the officers and the cabinet secretaries who came and went. The three most important represented all the types of a president. 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 Typically, finds about him in moments of a crisis. Those who might help, those who won't, and those who can't. James Monroe, Secretary of State, was a Revolutionary War veteran who had known Madison for decades. He had quarreled with him and reconciled with him. He was the man who had sent the midnight warning about the British march on the Capitol, and he had thrown himself into the effort to defend it. He had talent and energy, and had decided to serve Madison. John Armstrong, another veteran of the Revolutionary War, had been appointed Secretary of War six months after hostilities had begun to retrieve the disasters of an incompetent predecessor. In a year and a half on the job, he had cleared out dead wood and promoted fresh faces, but、uh, he had also fallen out. With the president, he disliked Madison personally and disagreed with him strategically, ignoring Madison's suggestions to hit the enemy as soon as they landed, and instead focusing all his attention on Baltimore. Armstrong too had talent and energy, and had decided by August eighteen fourteen to use neither on Madison's behalf. The man immediately responsible for the Capitol's defense was Sir William Winder, a 39-year-old former lawyer who had been in the army for only two years. He had received his、uh, current assignment in July, largely because he was the nephew of the governor of、uh, Maryland. He had、uh, been uneasily, unceasingly busy. The innumerable multiplied orders. Letters, consultations, and the demands which crowded upon me can more easily be conceived than described. He wrote, yet he had accomplished nothing. He had energy and no talent at all. At ten o'clock, word reached the navy yard that the British were making for Bladensburg, Maryland, a village not east of the capital. There was a gap in the hills there, and a short bridge over the eastern branch, five miles up from the navy yard, where the stream is narrow. It was the natural route for attacking Washington from the east. Monroe rode off to alert whatever American troops were already there. Winder followed with reinforcements. Armstrong came to the navy yard. Only after Monroe and the Winder left, Madison asked him whether he had any advice to give. He didn't, but added that since the battle would be between American militia and British regulars, the former would be beaten. Madison suggested that、uh, Armstrong really should take part in the coming engagement. I expressed to him my concern. And the surprise at the reserve he showed was how Madison recalled it. Armstrong answered that if Madison thought it proper, he would go off to Bladensburg too. The president, who sensed the importance of the coming engagement, even if his secretary of war did not, decided to ride to Bladensburg with his attorney general Richard Rush. He borrowed a set of、uh, pistols, and、uh, because his horse suddenly went lame, a second mount and set off. James Madison was、uh, sixty-three years old. He had never heard a shot fired in anger. He was a small man, just over five feet tall, just over a hundred pounds, and a sickly one. All his life. He was subject to what he called bilious attacks, upset stomachs and balls, and less often, 
a tax resembling episcopal and suspending the intellectual functions. He had a talent and energy in space. He was、uh, smarter than Monroe, Armstrong, and Winter put together. Smarter than Jefferson, perhaps even smarter than Adams. Over a lifetime of a public service, he had put his mind, forget his shoulder, to the wheel, reading, writing, speaking, and thinking, driving himself so hard that he often undermined his already weak constitution. But Madison was not a warrior. A warrior. Two years earlier, the day war was、uh, declared, he had made himself. Ridiculous by visiting the war and the navy departments in a little round hat and a huge cockade, a crude attempt to become a military leader by dressing like one. It is、uh, arguably, and some of his、uh, contemporaries did argue it. Madison said the、uh, Republican John Calhoun, Representative John Calhoun, lacked commanding talents. That he was not by nature a、uh, executive, but that morning he was、uh, the chief executive and the commander in chief. War was a five miles away, and he rode to meet it. He and Rush took the road that is、uh, still called the Bladensburg Road, overtaking American units as they went. After an hour in the saddle, they came down a hill, alongside a orchard. And toward the bridge that led over the eastern branch to Bladensburg's main street and its、uh, brick houses, an American horseman waved him back. The president and the attorney general had ridden ahead of their own front line. The British were already entering the town from the opposite direction. Winder, Monroe, and、uh, Armstrong. Were posted on the hill they had just descended to the rear. Madison and Rush rode back toward them. It was now about one o'clock. There were seven thousand Americans on or near the field, a mixture of militia and regulars, plus five hundred sailors who were still marching with canoe from、uh, the navy yard, more than enough to beat back the British. If they were well positioned and well led, if the Americans crumbled here, however, there was nothing to stop the enemy from taking the capital, and perhaps the president and his cabinet as well. The Americans had been arranged in three lines, too close to the Bordensburg Bridge, a third mile farther back. Monroe had taken charge, altering some of the dispositions at the last minute. Not to advantage, he pulled troops from the orchard and into fields, where they had no cover. Winter was a、uh, frantic, unable to make decisions or give、uh, orders. Madison asked Armstrong whether he had made any decisions or given any orders. The Secretary of, of War answered that he had not. I remarked, wrote Madison, that he might offer some advice. Armstrong was not the only passive, aggressive personality outside Bladensburg that morning. Madison and Armstrong rode up to Winder for a last-minute consultation. Muskets and artillery were already firing back and forth across the stream. Spooked. The president's borrowed horse reared and plunged, so that Madison could not take part in the conversation. When the secretary of war and the general were done speaking, Madison asked Armstrong whether he had offered any advice. Armstrong replied that he hadn't, and that the arrangements appeared to be as good as the circumstances admitted. What John Armstrong said was true. The American arrangements for the Battle of、uh, Bladensburg were as good as the circumstances, which included the abilities and the deficiencies of the commanders.
and the abilities and deficiencies of the man who had given them their jobs and kept them there. Admitted, the charm was、uh, wound up. Now the battle for the capital would、uh, play itself out. The courage James the courage James Madison showed on the morning of the Battle of、uh, Bladensburg is what first prompted me to write about him. It was a more moral courage, even more than physical. He did not put on a head and a cockade. He put his, himself at、uh, the point of contact. On a bad day, that was likely to get worse. He chose to see what was happening and to face the consequences of his actions. But the war of eighteen twelve is not what people most associate. With、uh, Madison, he is most famous for his role in producing the Constitution. Madison was called the father of the Constitution during his lifetime, and he has borne the title ever since. It is a misleading title if taken too literally. Madison was only one of seven Virginia delegates to the Constitutional Convention of seventeen eighty-seven, one of fifty-five overall. And did not get exactly the document he wanted. As the convention wrapped up, he worried in a letter to his friend Jefferson in Paris that the Constitution might not answer its、uh, national object, nor prevent the local mischiefs which、uh, everywhere excite disgust. The words actualized. Here were written in cipher. A practice Madison and Jefferson used to guard their thoughts from prying foreigners or Americans. Other men besides Madison made an essential contribution to the Constitution, to the fight for ratification, and to its first and most important amendments. The document was written in its final form by Governor. Governor Morris, the peg-legged delegate from Pennsylvania, a better choice for a draftsman, said Madison, could not have been made. Some of、uh, Madison's greatest writings went into his、uh, arguments, explaining and praising the Constitution in the Federalist, but the impresario of that project was、uh, Alexander Hamilton, who picked the authors. Madison and John Lay, in addition to himself, and wrote three fifths of the eighty-five papers. The strongest argument for ratifying the Constitution was the approval of George Washington, signaled by his presence at the convention and his quiet support afterwards. Madison understood that Washington was the heavyweight champion of American public life, which is why he stuck. By him, like a, a trainer, from the planning stage of the convention through the early days of、uh, Washington's presidency, finally the resistance of、uh, the Constitution's op- opponents, such as、uh, Madison's enemy Patrick Henry, obliged the document's supporters to offer something that they, as authors, had、uh, neglected to provide: a bill of rights. Let me stop here and read again next time.